Hi, you guys. This is Anne Marie coming at you as Ball Girl Will Travel. I'm the creator and founder of BallGirlWillTravel.com, the website and the blog. And I'm the creator of the Fly 40 Plus Black Women Solo Travel Community on Facebook. I'm on a mission to make solo travel accessible and fun for Black women over 40, especially those of us who are over 50. I want us to embrace solo travel and self-care, and I want to dispel the myth that you can't be fashionable and comfortable while you travel solo and travel light like me. Hashtag team carry on. If that's of interest to you and you like talking about these things or learning about these things, please like, comment, and subscribe. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite things right now for solo travel. So let's get into it. Now, you guys have seen several blog posts from me about favorite things for safe solo travel, gadgets for safe solo travel, and some other items around things I like to travel with. But I thought it would be great for me to put together a video about what I'm taking with me right now because I'm getting ready to do some solo trips around Mexico. And then I have an upcoming trip in the new year to Africa, which I'm super excited about and I'm planning in the planning stages for. So this is kind of top of mind. So I thought I would do a quick video, show you guys all my really favorite things right now that I've been taking with me because some of the things have changed. Some things have fallen off the list and some new things have been added to the list. So let's start with items for safe travel. And some of these things are going to be very familiar to you because you've probably seen me talk about them, but I'm going to share them again, especially for those of you who are new followers, so that you know what I recommend that you always have with you when you're traveling solo um, on your own, whether you're staying in a hotel, Airbnb, I always have these things with me. The first thing is I always carry a small smoke and carbon monoxide detector, and I bring batteries with me, and I always have this with me. A lot of Airbnbs do not have smoke and carbon monoxide detectors, so it's important to bring. Quick hack, also bring bag with batteries so that I don't have to go out and look for them. When I'm finished using the carbon monoxide and smoke detector, I take the batteries out, so they last pretty long. Next thing that I always take with me, and you have seen this before and you will always see it if you're following me is my wrist wallet. I like this one by Clouds because it has RFID technology in it so a person can't use one of those scanners to pull your credit card numbers if your credit card is in here. How it works is you put on your wrist just like so. I keep credit cards and ID, a copy of my passport and a little bit of cash with me because I usually carry a lot of cash. I don't believe in doing that. Use my credit card, carry it on my wrist. If you're wearing a long sleeve shirt, no one will even know that you have it, but people don't even notice it um, when you're walking around with it on. I might carry a crossbody with me to hold my phone usually and uh, you know, flashlight, some other things that I carry with me, but my cash usually is here or on my new favorite thing, which is my waist belt. I've always had one of these, but I always didn't always consistently use them, but now I do. So usually I keep one of these right under my shirt on my person. And anytime I'm traveling, I'll have one of these. So if I'm out and I need to take a certain amount, significant amount of cash for whatever reason, sometimes you're in traveling places, people want to be paid in cash. They don't take credit cards. Like in Mexico, cash is definitely king. And so it's always good to have cash with you. You can bargain better with cash. So I'll keep one of these on my person. When I'm traveling, if I have to carry cash with me, I keep this on my person. I do not uh, carry cash and stuff like that inside of my purse. I keep it on my person. This is my favorite thing. It also has RFID technology in it. I am going to drop links to these in the description. So if you're interested in getting one of your own, you can right so that is number three of my favorite things for safety and security number four is actually two things but i use them together that's my add -a lock and my door jam stop even when i'm in a hotel now i always jam the door with this and if i can fit my add -a lock into the lock i put that on the lock as well it's just added extra safety 
security because I frankly don't think hotels are the most secure place. I think people have a really false sense of security, but they're not any more secure than anywhere else. So you should take the same safety precautions. This literally fits over the lock in the door and makes it difficult for anyone to open the door. So you slide it over the lock and you close the door. So this is called an Adalock. I travel with them, I use it everywhere I go. When I stay in an Airbnb, especially if the door doesn't have a lock or if I don't feel the lock is sturdy enough, jam and add a lock is what I use. And then last but not least is, well not last but not least, I've got one more thing, is my alarm whistle. I love this thing. I haven't had to use it many times, but I always keep it clipped to my um, purse if I'm out at night, keep it clipped um, to my uh, carry-on bag, because I, I love to clip things to my carrying bag so I don't have to put them in my bag. But I do have to be careful with this because if you press it too hard, it will go off. But I'll show you really quickly what it sounds like. It's holding it away from me because it's loud. Right? It's loud. So if you have to set this off, it will throw someone off. So I've only had to use it once to distract someone so I had to, so I could like get away from them really quickly. But it worked like a charm. But I always carry this on my on me especially if i'm going out at night by myself i just clip it to my purse and i carry it with me and then last but not least is my first aid kit never travel without it again it clips to my carry-on bag so it's really great um if i'm going to the beach or things like outings while i'm on a solo trip i usually also throw this into my bag and take it with me um I keep, you know, cold medicine, band-aids. Um, I usually take an extra bag with um, charcoal pills, but I don't like to keep it on here because charcoal pills can make a mess. But I keep cold medicine, issues, stuff for um, bad stomach, Claritin because I have allergy issues all the time, ibuprofen, Tylenol, um, little packets, which I love, of um, Neosporin because you never know when you're going to need it. I keep those in here as well but i always carry a little first aid kit and you can buy one of these this i actually got i think at a trade show but you can buy these um and i will drop a link to a really great one that i found they're small like this they have a clip you clip it onto your suitcase honorable mention flashlight always carry a flashlight this is why i carry my own batteries this one takes AAA batteries, which are not always easy to find. It goes right in here. And so if I'm going out at night and I know I'm gonna be back late, I always make sure that I have a flashlight with me because sometimes streets are dark, y'all. And I don't wanna fiddle around, and take out my, walk around with my phone out. I'll carry a flashlight, right? So this is one that I really like. It lasts a long time if you have the batteries. Again, when I'm not using the batteries, take them out so that they last longer. So this is a really, sorry, great um, flashlight. And I put a link to it, it's by Dorsey. It's very bright when you turn it on. So I really like it. Our honorable mention on this one, it didn't quite make the top five, but it's number six, okay? So those are my solo travel safety items that I carry anytime I'm traveling solo, I'm going to have one of those things with me. Another thing that I also like to carry, and it's kind of borderline safety, but not really, is my Life Straw bottle. I don't carry this all the time. It really depends on where I'm going. So if I'm going somewhere where I'm not sure that I will consistently be able to get clean drinking water, I will bring this with me. It does fit into my carry-on but I am thoughtful about taking it because it takes up space. I will often take the filter out, put other items inside of it, and then pack it into my bag, right? But I don't carry it all the time, but on my upcoming trip to Africa, I'll probably take it with me. But it's really great, a really great filter. The filter lasts for a really long time. I'm bringing one backup filter with me, um, but this is a really great thing to carry with you. Also, if you don't wanna buy bottled water at the airport, you can just use the water in the water fountain, fill this up when you get through security, and there you have it. So that's called the life straw. Now, other items that I always carry with me um, 
on every trip, one of these things seems weird, washcloths. These are bleach safe washcloths and I carry at least two of them with me on every trip. Why? Because in a lot of hotels and Airbnbs in for other countries outside the U US, they don't give you washcloths. This is also common in Europe. They give you a hand towel and they give you a big towel. They don't give you a washcloth. I also bring these because if I wanna wash my face, like wash lipstick off, makeup off, don't wanna mess up anybody's um, washcloths, these are bleach safe. I can wash my face with these. They won't stain, they wash really easily. So I bring them with me. I usually put one on the bottom of my um, personal bag and I also put one in my carry-on bag. These are great, I found them on Amazon. I'll put a link, I never travel without them. Another thing I never travel without is I always bring at least one rapid COVID test. We are still in the time of COVID. I shared a video, which I'll drop a link to, um, about doing rapid at home or in your hotel COVID tests that the airlines will accept, but this is not one of them. I also bring just regular rapid COVID tests with me just in case I'm not feeling well, I'm not sure what's wrong. I take a COVID test to give myself peace of mind. So I always bring at least one of these as well as now I've been buying at least one of the proctored um, at home tests so that I can just take the test when I'm ready to return and the airline will accept it. But I always bring one of these at home ones with me as well as, as well on every trip. Next thing that I always travel with and you've heard me talk about is my Bose noise canceling headphones. I don't go nowhere without these y'all because I can't, I don't want to listen to people's children crying on the plane. I don't want to listen to people arguing on the plane. So when I'm on the plane, I have my headphones on. So I listen to my music, listen to my podcast, listen to books, watch, you know, watch movies that I download on my iPad. I just don't want to be listening to other people while I'm on the plane. So even if I don't sleep in them, but I always wear them on the airplane. Now, when I wanna to go to sleep, one thing that I don't go without are my high fidelity concert grade earplugs. Never travel without these. They clip, again, I clip them onto my carry-on and when I get on the plane, I drop them into my bag so that when I'm ready to sleep, I take them out and I put them in my ears with a nice eye, you know, face mask. Where's my face mask? I'll show you guys my face mask. Here it is. Um, I also will carry my face mask, right? So I'm gonna put on my face mask and I put these in my air and I get my neck pillow, which I'm gonna show you in a minute and I go to sleep. I don't play about sleep on a plane because usually I like to take overnight flights so that when I get where I'm going, I can just be out and about, drop my bags off and be out and about. So I don't play about getting sleep on flights. So my my face mask, air, for, air plugs. I only use these in flight. I'm very careful, I put them in carefully because you know, these things can get, get lost. So I'll show you what they look like. You just screw the top off of this. There are four of them in here. This is what they look like. I just pop them in my ear and you won't hear a daggone thing. These are the kinds of earplugs that musicians use that perform, you know, that play at concerts and things like that and people that are in orchestras. So they're really good um, to have. They're called high fidelity um, concert grade earplugs and I really re recommend them. So in addition to that, I also travel with a neck pillow. For long haul flights, I usually use my turtle neck pillow. You put it around your neck, basically you open it up. It's not very sexy, but it's very effective. You put it around your neck like so. You wrap it around the Velcro and you go to sleep. It doesn't look cute, but it works. So for long haul flights, this is the one that I do. Now for shorter flights, I will usually do my um, travel rest pillow, which I'm gonna show you. I'll do my travel rest pillow. It takes a lot less space, but I don't feel it's as comfortable as my turtle. It's good, 
but if I really want to sleep for a good long period of time, and usually that's what I want on a longer flight, so I'm any flight that's seven, eight hours or more, I'm going to take the turtle. If it's a shorter flight, I'm going to take my travel rest pillow. And how this works is you open it up, you blow air into this, you self-inflate it with air, and then you put it across your body, or you can strap it to the airplane chair. It has a really long thing, little string here that you can adjust and you can attach it to your body or you, and then you just lean over. You can wear it this way, you can wear it that way. You'll get some good sleep with it, but I feel like if it's for a longer flight, I'm going with the turtle, right? But those are my two favorite neck pillows. I don't like those round ones. I, I get neck pain with those. I've tried multiple versions of them and I get neck pain with them, so I've just kind of given up on those. Um, I also, I'm gonna show you guys a couple more things. I always take a rain slicker. I love this one. This is my favorite rain slicker. I carry this one with me because it's easy to travel with. It's flat, but it's really cute and fashionable. It is black with polka dots, so it goes with a lot of things that I wear, and it folds down really well. I got this on Amazon, I'll leave a link. If I know I'm going somewhere, especially in summer months, I carry a rain slicker because in a lot of countries around the world and in the Caribbean, summer months are rain season. And so it rains randomly in the middle of the day, late at night, in the evening. So having a, rain, a cute rain slicker to put over my clothes with an umbrella, which you should also carry a small travel size umbrella, really comes in handy, especially when I'm solo traveling in summer months. And then the last thing that I'm gonna share with you that I never travel without are my compression bags. I like the one by REI. REI is a store that sells camping and hiking equipment. This is a more expensive compression bag. I will share a more affordable option that you can get on Amazon, but I love these compression packing cubes. I swear I can carry like, several weeks of clothes. If you know how to pack, you know how to dress, you know how to coordinate your stuff, you can get a lot of stuff into these bags. I usually travel with two of the small ones. These are the, the medium ones, these are the medium size ones. So I usually travel with two medium size ones, which I just lay side by side in my suitcase, or I'll travel with one large one. But lately, I find that I've been able to get away with more things. This is a large one if I travel with um, the medium. So I've been doing the medium. And so definitely for the summer when I am traveling um, around Mexico, I am going to do the um, medium size one. Probably for some of these weekend trips that I'll be doing, I'll probably only need one medium um, compression bag for, but some of them, I think I'm gonna do at least one five day trip coming up. I'll be taking two of them, but I really swear by them. They are, I mean, I think if you're traveling without compression bags, like why? And if you're a team carry on like me and you don't check bags, they're like the most important thing that you can be traveling with. So a couple other things, um, I said this was the last, but I actually have a couple more things I'm gonna show you. Other things that I never travel without, an international electric adapter, right? This one is by Epica. It's my favorite. I have several of these, but this is by far the one I travel with the most. It has outlets for every part of the world. So it has the EU, UK, US, and Australia. It also has a plug-in here that you can charge your headphones with, because you know that one outlet is usually different. And it also has outlets for charging phone and other electronic items here. And so I really swear by this, I don't travel without this because if you forget it, the ones that you'll buy in country are not gonna be like this. They're gonna just give you whichever one is for their country. So this is an international um, electric adapter. So I highly recommend that one as the one you should buy. The other thing that I always bring with me, and this is like old school, I guess, but I learned this a long time ago from my mama, is I always bring a uh, little sewing kit. Cause I know how to sew. I know how to like fix a button. I know how to hem. 
not I mean some of these things nowadays people don't know how to do but thanks to my mom I did learn these things so I always bring a little sewing kit with me so if I have a little mishap with my clothing I can fix it really quickly I always bring a backup battery usually for a longer trip I take two right but this one gives me about two hours and then I have another one that gives me about four hours. So I always keep these charged, this one's by Griffin. I always keep these charged and I carry them with me on my trips so that when I go out during the day, if I'm going on a tour or whatever, I charge up my phone, but I bring a backup battery in my purse. This one's really nice and small. I can slip it in the back pocket of my jeans. I can pop it into my purse, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I really like this one a lot. But like I said, I have another one as well that's a little bit bigger, but it gives me about four hours of power. This one gives me about two. And then here are a couple beauty things, because you know, we all wanna be pretty, that I don't travel without. Now, people always ask me about my red lipstick. So I'm gonna share with you the red lipstick that I wear most of the time. There's a matte red lipstick that I love, it wears long. It's by Sephora, not very expensive. It's number 96. It's red. It's a matte. I'm wearing it right now. I'm wearing two lipsticks right now. This is one of them. My Sephora. You can also get travel sizes of this at Sephora. You can ask them for it. And you can get this on Amazon and I will drop a link to it. I love this red. I think it would look good on almost any skin tone person. But I love this red. I don't go anywhere without it. Pretty inexpensive option. My favorite lipstick of all time is this red lipstick. It's called Cherry Lush. It's by Tom Ford. It is not cheap, but I love it. And so this is what I buy. One of the things I do now is when I am traveling, I go through duty free. And if I can find it a duty free, I buy it in duty free. That way, at least I don't pay the taxes. Honorable mention is Tom Ford, fucking fabulous. It is fucking fabulous. That's the name of the lipstick. It's a deeper red than this one. A little brighter, actually, not deeper. I love that one too. But this is the MVP. I will put a matte lipstick on and then I'll put this one over it, which is what I'm wearing right now. So these are my two red lipsticks that I don't go anywhere without. And the last thing I never travel without is my favorite fragrance, which I've been wearing for, I guess, now the last five or six years, which is Gucci Bloom. I don't like to bring the big bottle on travel because I'm not trying to get none of my my um, my perfume confiscated by TSA. So I always travel with the little one. Again, if I can find it at the duty free while I'm traveling, I will grab it there. It's harder to find the roller balls at duty free. They usually don't have them, but I've seen them from time to time. So if I see one, I usually buy it. But you can also get these roller balls at Sephora. And when I was in, where was I? I feel like I was in Europe, in Italy. I was able to find the roller ball at a Sephora there. So I grabbed it there um, because I was running out of this. So I usually only wear these, use the roller ball one when I'm traveling, um, but I always carry this um, with me. So these are my favorite things for solo travel right now. These are all things that I carry with me and I will be using over the summer as I travel around Mexico. I hope that you found this video helpful. If there are items that you are interested in, I will drop links so that you can grab your own in the description. If there are things that you travel with that you think I should know about, drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. But I do hope that you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye.